friends and welcome back to the 11th night of the 13 nights of fright on my channel I'm your host Olivia Garcia now as always the topics of tonight's video might be too scary and could be triggering to some viewers so if that is you please proceed with caution now that's out of the way on with the video now tonight we're gonna be talking about none other than the star of the conjuring movie Bathsheba Bathsheba by the power of God I condemn you back to hell <laughs> And if you haven't watched the original Conjuring movie, well, spoiler alert, I guess. Now, for those of you who have watched the Conjuring movies, they're actually based upon real life situations that happened to Ed and Lorraine Warren over their years of paranormal investigation, including the one in Harrisville, Rhode Island. Now, what's depicted in the movie isn't exactly the full story, and it might be a little bit over-exaggerated to make it a scary movie, but it still has some truth and reality. So, Bathsheba, the star of the show, the one who cursed the whole entire land, was actually a real person. Yeah, I know, crazy, right? I thought she was like some made up creepy devil thing, but no, she's a real person. Now, I actually thought she was a demonic entity because of her name, but it wasn't that uncommon of a name back then. And actually, it was two different Hebrew words, bat meaning daughter and Sheba meaning seven, but if you put them together, it means to make an oath. But an oath to who? Could it have been the devil? Because that makes so much sense. Now, Bathsheba Thea, which was her full name, was actually born in 1812 back in Rhode Island. She later married Judson Sherman in 1844 and later gave birth to a child in 1849 at the age of 37. Now, New England folklore isn't always that accurate and some of the different versions of the story mention that they had three other children that died before the age of seven. So, I'm not really sure about that, but it would make a lot of sense seeing as what she does later on. About a week after Bathsheba gave birth to her child, her husband found her trying to sacrifice it to the devil. Now, some variations of the story say that she actually killed her child during the sacrifice, and others say that her husband was able to stop her before she sacrificed the child. After she was caught, she ran out to the backyard, climbed up to the tallest tree, proclaimed her love for Satan and cursed her land saying that anyone who ever stepped foot upon it will be cursed forever and then proceeded to hang herself from the tree. But as we know from the Conjuring movies, her spirit still lingered on and the curse seemed to work. But oddly enough, this wasn't the first time a baby had died while in Bathsheba's care. A few years prior, a baby suspiciously died while she was taking care of it. They found that the baby had a hole in the base of its head the size of a sewing needle, but somehow the court found her not guilty and let her off. But the public wasn't as easily convinced. You see, Bathsheba was actually related to a woman named Mary Town Eastley, who was wrongly accused during the Salem witch trials and executed for her crimes. And she never seemed to get over it. Which made the town folk believe that she really was a witch and that she was evil. I mean, they really weren't wrong still. Now, fast forward to 1970 when the Perrin family moves into Bathsheba's old house with their five daughters. We all know the story from the Conjuring movie and you might think a lot of it's over exaggerated, but I mean, it is, but a lot of the stuff that happened in the movie seemed to happen to the Perrin family in real life and they suffered from it for 10 years. They finally contacted Ed and Lorraine Warren who helped them find a way out of the house. But the Perrins did do their research. They found out that eight other families had lived in that house before them and they all died of weird and mysterious deaths. So what do you think? Do you think it was Bathsheba's curse that caused all the trouble after her death? I would believe it 100%, but I want to know your thoughts, so leave it down below. But that's all I got for you guys tonight. I hope you enjoyed tonight's story, and I hope you are enjoying the series. It's almost done. There's two more nights left before Halloween, and I'm really sad. It's almost over, but don't worry. I've got some pretty cool stuff planned. So I will see you guys tomorrow night for another spooky video. I can't guarantee it's going to be a scary story, but it's going to be something pretty cool. So stay tuned. I'll see you tomorrow night. Peace out. Bye. Boo.